So, so this is a real test from a real game company. Uh, this is a writing test. This is for a, a narrative design job, I think. And uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different projects that uh, that there are tests for. So I thought we would go through them one by one. And, uh, I think each one's about one or two pages. This one's 2,000. That one's good. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Oh, it's got pictures. That's why. Oh, it's still, it's not too bad. Character design and naming. Design a game universe. See? Well, okay. Maybe we should start with this one. Examine the provided two pictures in which both of the characters are from the same fantasy game. Please give a brief design of the universe and pay attention that the game is a mobile roleplay fantasy game designed for both moderate players and hardcore players. So we got some like arcana, sci-fi-ish kind of stuff going on with the headphones and things. And more arcane magic, more pure magic, elven. We got different races here. And I got old architecture and castles. All right. Uh, brief design of the universe. Character design. Name. Okay, so here's let's do question. Let's do this one. This, let's do this one first because this is more broad. <laughs> and uh, I know the broad stuff is the hardest stuff for people to get through because they're like, uh, how, where do I start? Where do the ideas come from? Um, your mind. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Mobile roleplay fantasy game. All right. It's going to involve spells and like technology as magic. So we'll just start down here and call it, uh, what are we going to call this universe? <clears throat> Something with arcane in it. Arcanum. Arcanum void. Arcanum void. Ooh, maybe I'm not feeling very creative today. Do I need music? Maybe I need music. <laughs> Millions of years ago, the magical vortex. Hey, stream beats. But why? It paused. It's because I went away. That's weird. Ah, uh, no. At the dawn of time is better. A magical vortex opens into the universe. Names are hard sometimes. Lonlorian. <clears throat> Let's drop magical there. Magical energy. Known as the Arcus Mist spewed forth across the galaxies, raining down on the planets. Then of course of every life form would forever be changed as evolutionary 
and developmental processes accelerated at an alarming rate. Music's too much, too intense. Spotify, why do you have no volume control? Oh, there, there it is. Sorry, got it. There, there we go. So it's, it's, if it's too overwhelming, it I can't think. Just like I can't think when I've got uh, tracks with like speaking, can't do it. As evolutionary developmental 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 processes accelerated at an alarming rate. What normally would have taken millions of years was accomplished. In only a few thousand. A network of tunnels and wormholes and teleportation gates and connected thousands of worlds and life forms Societies formed Societies formed within an open universe teeming with life and the ability to change almost anything. Now we need conflict. <clears throat> the peace reigned in the early millennia. The time of the Arknum. Trouble is brewing. Trouble is brewing. In the fundamental philosophies of two particular mindsets. The pure magi. Believe that magic must be controlled. By those with the will and the power to make sure that all of the wondrous creations not be. Right. Hey, Nathan. Thanks for stopping in. Dude, writing tests are really fun. Writing tests are really fun. I, I actually do collect them. I have a folder filled with these from like a variety of companies. And uh, every once in a while, um, like sometimes I don't even send them back because I have no interest in the job. Uh, I think I might in this case. Um, but yeah, like it's just pure... It, sometimes just having the prompt gets your mind going. <laughs> uh, let's see, what was I? Uh, the pure magi I believe that magic must be controlled by those with the will and the power to make sure that all of the wondrous creations of Lamorian will not be destroyed by a tyrannical power monger. Wow, techno magi believe that all magic must be free to the masses 
so that every experimental angle could be pursued and humanity and uh, humanity, it's not really, and life could be pursued and life the furthest reaches of possibility. Possibility! Come on, Dave. My keyboard's sticking on the, the space bar. I'll give you all five of these if you want. If you want the, I actually, actually, if you want, I'll share the folder with you, uh, where I keep the the design tests. Uh, so a lot of them aren't writing tests. A lot of them are design tests. So those are a little. I don't know if you'd be interested in those because it's a lot of spreadsheets and shit. Uh, but uh, this this little folder of stuff is uh is pretty cool. Like, I don't know if these are all games that are already in production or that they're planning to do, but. Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty neat. I don't know how much I'm expected to write for each one. I'm just gonna do a couple paragraphs, uh, so that so that uh, they get the idea that I, you know they get where I'm going. <laughs> What's wrong? More concise language. Be oh, it's the thing where it wants the it's like business stuff. I like my additional words. <laughs> no, that's 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 a reasonable suggestion, actually. <sighs> the pure magi and the techno. See, I can't use magi twice. Techno. What's another good word here? Let's get the thesaurus. The thesaurus is your best friend. Thesaurus.com. Like sorcery, techno, techno alchemist, techno alchemist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he kind of he looks like an alchemist. He's got like scrolls and potions. I love it. Perfect. Pure Magi and the Techno Alchemist would eventually come to war. A war which raged on a thousand worlds. Dot dot dot. Done. End scene. End scene. <laughs> uh, we'll just do a little uh, heading seven. Where's heading two? Alright, fine. Whatever. All right, question two, character design and naming. The game is a mobile roleplay fantasy game designed for both moderate players and hardcore players. Based on it, we hope that the candidate can provide the character design and biographies for the characters both of the pictures above, which can quickly make players interested and understand the characters in the game world. Please name the characters with the requirements that the names should be cool and easy to remember. There's no length restriction on the universe and character design and description. Cool. The last big one you did was World of Tanks. How many pages did they want? <laughs> you really went for it. That's a good response, right? Did they go with it? Is it is it is that canon now? Yeah. Twelve pages? A lot of people won't read past one, is what I found. <laughs> Which is sad, but I don't know. Uh, let's see. I gotta name these guys. Mm. Mm. This looks like an Elisandra to me. Is that an use name? I'm not infringing on anyone. Oh, it's like Melisandre from... I'm going with it. She looks like a... Let's shorten it. No, 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 no. She needs a long formal name, Alessandra. Alessandra. And who's this dude? Oh, they eliminated the position? What the fuck? I don't, you know, uh, I also applied for a, a, it wasn't for World of Tanks, but it was for um, same studio. 
but I interviewed with the 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 guy, the creative director, and uh, he he was one of those people who was like a creative genius. You know what I'm talking about? Creative genius, which actually means asshole. It's like code for asshole. <laughs> so I didn't. I wanted nothing to do with that company. It was so bad. The interview was so bad. Everything about it was so bad. No, not Leonard. Uh, uh, you would know. It's like uh, Paul something. Bart. Paul. What's his name? I, I bet you I can find him. Or Paul. Oh, Barnett. Paul Barnett. That guy. God damn. That was the worst. One of the worst interviews I've ever had. Just terrible. Just terrible. Dude was pacing. I could hear him pacing in, the, in wherever he was. And it was just... I, he felt sweaty. It was weird. <laughs> and it was just audio. Like, it wasn't video. So weird. It feels like a Michael to me, doesn't it? Maybe the alchemists have special, like, surnames. Scroll Keeper Michael. Let's go with that. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Michael's not good enough. Scroll Keeper. Uh, did I ever tell you about Serge Hasquit <laughs> and how he would do meetings? It was so weird. Like he'd be, he'd be, like he'd be silent, completely silent the whole meeting, and then uh, it, he he would be like like this, like he's half asleep. And then every once in a while, it wouldn't even have anything to do with what we were talking about, like design-wise, or like explaining the design of the game or whatever. He just, he just, I can't deal with the headphones on. He just like, and we'd all look at him expectantly, <laughs> and then it'd be nothing. And he would do that like two more times, and then finally. He would get up and he did this whole spiel where he would write on the, the whiteboard and stuff. And um, it was like nonsense. <laughs> it was like he wrote like X, B, Y, A. You see, this is an enemy. <laughs> Those are the buttons on the Xbox controller. And he's like trying to tell us like, I mean, someone eventually interpreted it in such a way that it made some kind of sense, which is like, oh, he's trying to say that we should... Uh, decide what the feeling of the buttons are for the enemies and stuff. And I'm like, we are not anywhere near gameplay. <laughs> this is concepting phase. Are you kidding me? We're, we're going to design controller shit before we've even got a basic concept for the game? No. This is idiocy. Pure idiocy. Yeah, he doesn't think like we do. Exactly. That's how, that's how they protect these geniuses uh, from scrutiny. But no, I scrutinized him and I paid as a result <laughs> so uh but hey he's been ousted from the industry and i still work in it so fuck him <laughs> uh scroll keeper darnas darnassus scroll keeper drell i still want to go back to michael scroll keeper Drell, not quite. No, he's too blinky. More of a... Ah, uh, not Alex. Mel. Fell. Zell? Scrollkeeper Zell. Scrollkeeper Zell. That's hard to say. Scrollkeeper Zell. Scrollkeeper... Yeah, Zell. I'm gonna go with Zell. I don't want to think about it too much. Because I'll be here all day. <clears throat> <laughs> Dell? Dell's a computer. I can't. I can't. I'll get sued. <laughs> Does she need a thing? Uh, I'm just going to go with Double Sunder. <clears throat> the youngest Magi to join the council. Alessandra. Worked. Invade ranks. And scroll keepers. Oh wait, I can't say scroll keepers because he's right here. 
Uh, I want to go library, but let's not go with library ranks. Because let's go, like, I would say the Magi would be more like sorcerers, more spontaneous casting. So let's say... Work your way through the ranks of the sorcerers. 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 To... <sighs> through her innate understanding. Spell. Construction. Archivist. Ooh, that's good. I think I'll use that here. Uh, understanding of spell construction. <clears throat> Petulant youth. She is well known for questioning the elders. Questioning the elders. And the rules of the Magi, but she upholds the ideals. Sandra believes. Oh, Sandra. Lost her father in a magical explosion caused uh right techno alchemist. Auction gone awry. She's vowed. Keep magical. Keep Arkham mist in the hands of those responsible enough to use it wisely. Only Alright, let me read that again. The youngest Magi to join the council. Alessandra worked her way through the ranks of the sorcerers through her innate understanding of spell construction. A petulant youth, she is well known for questioning the elders and the rules of the Magi, but she upholds the ideals of the pure Magi to the fullest. Alessandra lost her father to a magical explosion caused by a techno-alchemist concoction gone awry. She has vowed to keep the Ark of the Mist only in the hands of those responsible enough to use it wisely. As a result, A little dry. I'm gonna go with it. Scroll people. So let's see. Let's look at Zell. Does that fit? I think that fits. All right. Scroll keeper Zell. He looks pretty serious. He's got control. Mm. So we're going to set him as opposed to Alessandra. Uh, Scorekeeper Zell. A master within the Archivist's Union. Zell has long been fighting to make magic. Archivist public good for the use of all life. As such, he supports potion factories in his home world. Um, Where create and categorize 
every type of magic and ship it across the universe for use by those most in need. <clears throat> Zell recognizes the possibility of use and his own best friend succumbs to uh, mist addiction having inhaled enough of the stuff that his own essence evaporated into the folds of the universe. Shoot. I'm saying universe too much. Into the folds of the ethereal realm. Yet, Zelsi has seen the good that his work can do, growing food on barren worlds, and bringing life back to back to Bringing life back to diseased, but I just said worlds to planets on the verge of extinction. There. All right. Let's read that again. Let's look at him again, and let's read it again. A master within the Archivist Union, Zell has long been fighting to make the Arcanum Mist a public good for the use of all life. As such, he supports the potion factories on his homeworld of Anire, where the Archivists create and categorize, categorize every type of magic and ship it across the universe for use by those most in need. It's quite a sentence. Yeah, it's okay. Zell recognizes the possibility of abuse, and his own best friend succumbed to mist addiction, having inhaled enough of the stuff that his own essence evaporated into the folds of the ethereal realm. Yet... Zell has seen the good that his work can do. Uh, hey, new bearer, thanks for following. Uh, yet Zell has seen the good that his work can do, growing food on barren worlds and bringing life back to planets on the verge of extinction from disease. I'm okay with that. I think I I, would, I could submit this. Potion factory plants are epic. I would I would love to see that. <clears throat> All right, I think I've created a world here, the Arcanum Void, though I never got to how it became the Void. And would eventually create the Arcanum Void. There, now I've alluded to it. What is the Arcanum Void? It's a black hole of magic, but it's cooler as a mystery, I think. The explanation makes it less cool, I think. <laughs> All right, test one, boom, done. In the bag, in the bag. All right, let's look at the next one. Please write a short backstory for the character in the image below. Consider his ideals, motivations, and any personality traits he might have. What is interesting about this character? Maximum 300 parts. Oh, all right, max, max. Is this a max? It's not a Steven. Ken. No. Eric. Eric. That's an Eric, isn't it? Or is it a Max? No, it's not a Max. He looks a bit German, doesn't he? <laughs> you type into a web page that counts them and then assume your writing is being stolen? You know, it very well might be. Uh, I have some questions about things like Grammarly and stuff. Um, I mean, I know for a fact that Grammarly tracks all your text and, and like stores it somewhere. I've seen it, so I know that happens. Um, 
By the way, uh, if you have any questions about game development, game design, that kind of stuff, feel free to ask. Uh, I mean, that's what the channel is for. No one ever asked me anything, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. I'm thinking Eric. Eric Vaughn. Is he Irish? I mean, he's got green eyes. I'm gonna do the old trope of the name means what they do. So we're gonna do. I mean, he's clearly a detective. Von Sleuther. <laughs> Terrible. Not doing that. <clears throat> Seamus. What's a Seamus? Really? Is that Irish in origin? What is that? What's that from? Obscure origin. From Yiddish. Or the Irish male game. <laughs> Eric Von Seamus. <laughs> I uh, I have to now. That's uh that's uh yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh. Eric follows in the footsteps of his father, the great detective. Great. Irish <laughs> detective Victor. Is that even an Irish name? I can't do this. <laughs> Eamon. Oh, yeah. Ira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan. Aoife. Fion. Oh, there's a name. Fion. Oops, with I's and O's. Fion von Seamus. Von is a German thing. Can I do that? Irish surnames. Oh, right. We'd have to go with like an O. Gallagher. Quinn. McLaughlin. <laughs> Means Viking. O'Farrell. Eric O'Farrell. Fionn O'Farrell. Mm. O'Donnell. O'Callaghan. Is that why cops are often O'Callaghan? Eric O'Callaghan. I'm going with that. He's super Irish looking. I mean, come on. I mean, I could see a bit of German in there, but... <clears throat> All right, Eric O'Callaghan and his father, Fionn O'Callaghan. Great Irish detective, Fionn O'Callaghan. <clears throat> you solved the case. Crown jewels by discovering an underground mole thief. Mole thief. Guild. <laughs> he discovered an underground mole thief guild. <laughs> like a cat thief, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going with it. Uh, uh, I don't even care. Uh, Eric. He's been on the trail. Of the, what are we gonna do here? What's he on the trail of? What else is going on in this thing? 
Who are these? Is this the same character? Uh, okay. Uh, is this even related? It's, this this one's a little more disjointed, whereas the previous one was like sort of all connected. So I'm not sure what to make of this. I'm not even sure these are in the same style. I guess they are. What is this guy? FedEx? Why is he carrying a box? All right, we'll figure that out in a second. Let's finish Eric O'Callaghan. What are we at? 39 words? Boy, I haven't even gotten started. Maximum 300. Eric has been on the trail. <clears throat> of the infamous Mole Thief. <laughs> Dubious wretch. <laughs> this is fucking terrible. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> I need an E with the... How do you do the umlauted E? Oh, can't. <clears throat> Who he believes. Who he believes. Who Eric believes. Is responsible for this missing author. Yeah. Wait. Father's disappearance. There we go. Forensic interior design audits. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, uh, Eric is a long standing member of the gentleman's. Detective Club. Because <laughs> there's no GDC this year, is there? Not that I would go. Um, Gentleman's Detective Club. I need more music. All right, what was I doing? Uh, Eric is a long-standing member of the Gentleman's Detective Club. Where... Crimes... are researched... and circulated... to see who can solve them. Quickest... Quickest? Quickest? Quickest. <clears throat> Uh, serious question. When you were taking a test like this, how much do you try to hew this to the spirit of the question? How much do you try to give an inspired answer? Uh, generally, I'm trying to have fun. Because um, if I have fun doing it, generally I get a better result. And then if it's not what they want, then that's fine. Because if I tried to do it their way and I wasn't enjoying it, then I, I probably wouldn't enjoy the job at all. So that's sort of my approach approach to it. So as long as it's fun for me, then I'll, I'll then I go forward. And then if it's not fun for me, I'll I'll just stop. <laughs> I'll just stop and I'll sit, put the test back and go nah. And then they won't get a response, <clears throat> um, which is fine. You don't have to respond to every test. Some of them are so poorly written that it's not even worth responding to. And I say that as a connoisseur of tests. I have experience with them, so I can say that. It's not a, it's not a flippant comment. <laughs> I still have to design my own uh, test. I, I have a game design test and I need to formalize it and turn it into a like normal normal thing that I use wherever I go. Crimes are researched and circulated to see who can solve them the quickest. We're going to have to move that to a new paragraph. Uh, dubious is often 
Let's go with Odur. <laughs> Odur is often several steps ahead. Just beneath the surface. Enough puns. The door is often several steps ahead. Coming crimes just beneath the surface of where. Eric is a long standing member of the Gentleman's Detective Club where crimes are researched and circulated to see who can solve them focused. <clears throat> Among the many agents. There are a few that we would consider friends. There are a few who Eric would consider great friends. Among them, we're going to connect these. Sally Bookend. <laughs> chief. That's a librarian? No. Let's go with the uh, chief engineer. Let's see. Sally Bookend, the chief engineer, and the smartest member. See, it's a gentleman's detective club, but they accept ladies. They're so progressive. <laughs> Gentle persons. That's more PC. <clears throat> Gadgets. Gadgets? Gadgets? Am I spelling that wrong? Gadgets? Improved and valuable. Ooh. Valuable in my field. And Tony, the <laughs> delivery guy who knows the fastest route <laughs> to any location, anywhere. <laughs> Can you start a sentence like that? Yeah, let's not do that. Tony the delivery guy. All right, I'm done with Erica Callahan here. Let's just put that here. And then I want to, uh, uh, ooh, no, no, there, that, that's what I want. <clears throat> oh, and this here. Stop selecting that. There. All right, good enough, moving on. Question two, write a short conversation between these two characters. Max 200 words. All right, so we've already named them. It's Sally and Tony. Uh, should we conform to standard script rules? Yeah, we should. Let me grab a manuscript uh, template. Maybe I have one here. Here we go. Nope, wrong one. Uh, screenplay. That's the one. Here we go. So, wait, a real conversation in a script is going to brief and have a character trait that one of them have. Uh, okay. Is it in this room? No. 
then I write a scene in the room. So these are two different things. So let's just establish the two characters. And then we'll write the room scene. Sally and Tony. By the way, these templates are all available online. They're all free. Uh, and I highly recommend grabbing them. If you've ever aspired to writing, just having the templates available makes starting on something so much easier um, because then it's in the correct format and it feels like you're writing for, for that format. And that makes, uh, psychologically, that makes a big difference for me. I don't know, I can't speak to anyone else, I guess. Um, but I suggest having these templates available. And you want to have all the basic ones. There's the manuscript format for like novels, short stories, and even submissions for magazines and things. So have a manuscript format available and then have a screenplay uh, format available. Uh, screenplay formats often used in games for cutscenes. So if you're going to write for games, you, you're going to end up writing cutscenes. <clears throat> and they they follow this format almost always. I, in fact, I don't can't think of any studio where it didn't happen. Uh, well, for cutscenes. For in-game writing, that's a different story. You're going to be writing in Excel <laughs> or something like it. All right, Sally, 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 Sally. Sally's an engineer. <clears throat> Tony. What are they meeting about? They're meeting about... Did you deliver the package? Now it sounds like a porno. <laughs> Did you get the report? Did you get the forensics? Forensics. So lighthearted and stuff, probably not going to be a knife. Probably not going to be like a murder weapon. Like I'm, th I'm thinking like Carmen San Diego kind of stuff. Like no one's ever really hurt and it's all like a joke. So <sighs> what would, what would, um, uh... Oh, it'd be a shovel. <laughs> sure did, Sally. <clears throat> You're not going to be surprised. This prince came up. What did I name? Odur. So sad to hear it. Maximum 200 words. So I'm going for brevity here. And I'm also connecting everything because if I'm not creating a world here, then what am I doing? <laughs> All right, last one. 
Look carefully at the room using the characters from the previous questions. Please write a short scene taking place in this room. Consider using different features in the room as part of the scene. Did I meet the prompt? Is it entertaining? Highlighting a character trait. I don't think I did. So Sally's an engineer. See, this is uh, this is where the writer doubt comes in. Uh, painful. This is where the overthinking happens. And when you overthink, generally, that will slow you down and stop you from doing anything. Let me think here. Let me think. Let me think. Start with one of them complaining about something to the other. Their roles and their attitudes have come out of that conflict. That's a good idea. What would Sally be complaining about? Uh... Did you get the forensic analysis before the show? What, uh, what would Sally be complaining about? Uh, she can't complete something. She needs to complete something. She can't do it without the forensic report. <laughs> Tony, I can't complete the dirt sniffer. these things. Report's done. I just delivered it. We all know what it's going to say. There. Now we've established he's an engineer and that he's like a delivery guy. Perfect. Thanks, Nathan. I mean, it's not great, but <laughs> but at least it's it's a lot better. All right, let's move this over. The point is to, isn't to make these perfect. It's to just get them done. <clears throat> oh, there's four questions. All right, we'll get to that last one. Okay, look at the room, and then Sally and Tony have a conversation. Uh, actually, I want to start with Tony. Oh my gosh! Look at the little puppers. Is an adorable doge. We're here for clues. Clues? How do we even know? Hmm. 
Come through here. Mm. It does look quite immaculate. Not a spot dust. I know that look. What are you seeing that I'm not? There. Under the couch. A lump in the carpet. Not everything is perfect here. Wait, that emphasis sucks. <laughs> Is there something here? I guess I could go for the basket. Hmm. Yeah, let's leave it more vague. Hey, wait, no, Tony, Tony, respond. Uh, what else is that? There, that's that feels like a game prompt, doesn't it? I think so. I think that'll work. Oops, that's that's four. We'll go here. <clears throat> You've been tasked with updating an existing game. The game is a casual one where players gradually remodel a house. Ugh. No. <laughs> the only existing mechanic is replacing old furniture with new furniture. I mean, there's a million ways to answer that. Just one new game mechanic? That's it? Uh, well, there's a million obvious things, which is like, you know, wall painting, moving furniture, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> uh, it's a little odd for writing tests. I, I think that this is the, the test is there's also design elements to this. Uh, it's yeah, it's a little weird. <laughs> It's like a design question in the middle of a writing test, which is fine. I mean, it's fine for me, <laughs> but it's, if someone were approaching this as a pure writer, I'm not sure. Maybe they're just seeing if the writer has good game design ideas. Uh, but uh, just saying the obvious answer would be uh, t t too obvious to be boring. So I want to do something else. So let me see. Couch sitting mechanic. Players earn cash by getting friends. Ooh, couch surfing. <laughs> what do you call it? Couch. Couch hotel mechanic. Players earn cash by getting friends to visit their house and sit on their couch. They earn soft currency and couch gets experience. <laughs> Experienced couches earn stars, but also degrade and eventually can be retired to the couch hall of fame. Uh, yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid, but I love it. Players earn cash by getting friends to visit their house instead of the couch. For each friend that does so, they earn soft currency and the couch gets experience. Experienced couches earn stars, but also degrade and eventually can be retired to the couch hall of fame. At five stars. <clears throat> five star couch. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, unlocks 
new alternative skins for the couch. I like couch surfing better. Couch surfing mechanic. Players earn cash by getting friends to visit their house instead of their couch. For each friend that does so, they earn soft currency and couch aids experience. Experienced couches earn stars, but also can breed and eventually can be retired with the couch hall of fame of five stars. A five star couch unlocks new alternative skins for that couch style, which can then be purchased and used. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> players also earn couch surfing experience by sitting on the couches. That's providing something. Good enough for me. I don't know if that. I mean, it's it's okay. That's okay. I I would. I I would. <laughs> I wouldn't make that. I wouldn't want to work on that game. To be honest, it's just not a not a casual guy. But uh, I think that'll serve for now. All right, that's done. Let's do this. <clears throat> so here we are on this one's Project G. I'm just going to go in order. World building. Please design a fantasy race or ethnic group based on traditional fantasy worlds like Dungeons and Dragons, World of Warcraft, or Lord of the Rings. You can illustrate the characteristics of the group according to these aspects. History, religious beliefs, and magical system. No more than 300 words. That's a little bit limiting for a racial thing. So, uh... Let me see. The Turo. <laughs> Ham Turo. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are going to be hamster humanoids. Let's go with that. Uh, is the music still going? Yes. Okay, good. The ambient music in the background helps me think of... Uh, it gives me ideas sometimes. I don't know how that works in the brain. I'm sure that the a psychologist can tell you how that works. All right, Hamturo. A bipedal race of humanoid... Humanoids with hamster-like characteristics. The Hamturo are a generally benevolent race, preferring to negotiate or hide from their enemies. Negotiate with or hide from their enemies. Their instincts for hoarding and burrowing make them incredibly difficult to eradicate some of the more evil races that wish to eliminate their presence. But generally, <clears throat> but 
I intend to find a way to get along the majority, making them a neutral territory for most conflicts. Uh, religion, history, history, and I'm true. I need a picture. Hamster humanoid. I'm just doing a Google search. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. What is this, a Warhammer hamster? <laughs> Good lord. Some of these are awful. I might just use that. God, hamsters are adorable. I really need to get another hamster. Let's go with... I'm just going to go with this guy. It's so cute. That's going to get me bonus points. <laughs> Give me the photo. Oh, stop. All right, fine. Can I copy the image and paste? Perfect. That. And then we'll do uh, like that. <clears throat> Preferring to negotiate with or hide from their enemies. Their instincts for hoarding and brewing make them incredibly difficult to eradicate for some of the more evil races that wish to eliminate their presence. But they tend to find a way to get along with the majority of people, making them a neutral territory for most conflicts. <clears throat> the Hamturo. Uh, always lived on the fringes of the larger societies. Their underground kingdoms are uh, equal in grandeur to those of the dwarves and drow. Primarily, this comes from their hoarding instincts, which has allowed them to accumulate great deals of wealth. Allowed them to accumulate great deals of wealth, and in the winters, to sell back the extreme excess. Of their food stocks to those who are not as well prepared. have always remained neutral in conflicts and are sometimes guarded with disdain and they are found to be supplying <laughs> both sides of the war. However, few can do without and thus throughout history their territories have been regarded as neutral, or are generally avoided when conflicts arise. Religion. The Hamtur are not known for their piety. But they do worship. They do sometimes worship or follow religions that are associated with bountiful harvests and great wealth. <clears throat> having no particular deity of their own. They are often, they can be found in temples of worship throughout the kingdom, which 
also gives them which also a sense of wait, what, 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 what is that sense of I want to say that they're like generally everyone sees them as neutral but again but in a different way which also gives the other races a sense of neutrality What else we got? Magical system. The Hamturo are magic averse. Their skills as engineers and negotiators to handle all conflicts. Though they do use magical items that they find, most are stored for potential sale later. <clears throat> there is nothing in their nature that denies them the ability. They just have no aptitude or interest in the magical arts, preferring instead. Uh, there. Good enough. I don't need this again. It's reiterating. I think we're at 300 now. 291. Perfect. Character design. Oh, according to the existing, existing game world building, this character is an undead queen. I, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> what else would she be? Uh, a brief background story which can illustrate her personality or gameplay role. Okay. What does she look like? Krilla? This music isn't evil enough. Some sort of raven theme here. Just call her Craven with a K. <laughs> Craven the Cruel. Crevella. Oof, that's too much like crevice. Cren the Vile. Cream the Vile. Cream, like Queen. Cream. K R E E N. Cream the Vile. Yeah, I'm going with that. Cream the Vile. Mm -mm. Originally, the queen. We need a land name. Well, we'll just say what it is and then we don't have to. Originally, the queen of the Elven Kingdom. All elven names are like Aluera na 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 Aluera. Originally the queen of the elven kingdom of Aluera, yeah. Over a thousand, over 10,000 years ago. <laughs> Cream the vile. Krelia ruled. 
how they are ruled with a soft-spoken demeanor and kindness that was legendary. So it was that when the cruel orcs burned her kingdom to the ground <clears throat> and raped her to death, she <laughs> She came back from the dead to exact cruel revenge, vowing never to be soft, never to show kindness to any creature ever again. Cream the vile was thus born and her necromantic magics. Oh, uh, we're way over 200, aren't we? No, we're not. We're good, we're good. Life-saving magics throughout kingdoms. And her kindness and openness. The Aluaria, Aluarian territories, Aluari. The crown jewel of the good. There we go. So it was that when the cruel orcs burned her kingdom to the ground and raped her to death, she came back from the dead to exact cruel revenge, vowing never to show any kindness to any creature ever again, to any living creature ever again. <clears throat> the undead ravens. The black feathers which are said to bring death and decay wherever they roam. Cool! Let me read that again. Originally the queen of the elven kingdoms of Aluaria over 10,000 years ago, Krelia ruled with a soft-spoken demeanor and kindness that was legendary. Her white owls would often deliver life-saving magics throughout the kingdoms, and her kindness and openness made Aluaria the crown jewel of the good. So it was that when the cruel so it was that when the cruel orcs burned her kingdom to the ground and raped her to death, she came back from the dead to exact cruel revenge, vowing never to show kindness to any living creature ever again. Cree the vile was thus born, and her necromantic magics are delivered by her undead ravens, the black feathers of which are said to bring death and decay wherever they roam. Do I need more? I have a little bit more. No, I think that's okay. Maybe one more sentence? Nah, no, that's fine. It's fine. Overthinking is the enemy of completion. <clears throat> uh, plot design. According to the background character story you wrote for the last question, if this character were to join the protagonist's team or to provide help for the protagonist, how would you write the story for joining the team of heroes? Please provide us an outline of the story. An outline? Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, we'll do an outline. So let's do some bullet points then. Basically, we're gonna aim for the three three act story structure here, where there's an intro, a conflict, and then a resolution. <clears throat> this is just the most basic form of which you can always expand on this. Uh, but it's the easiest when you're doing these tests because that's just how humans tell stories. There's a there's well, there's usually an introduction, yeah, introduction, conflict, and then resolution. Um, and then you can amp up the conflict so there can be multiple steps in between. But let's just stick to the hey, good morning, gameplay show. How are you doing? Let's see here. So how do you learn about Kareen the Vile? Yeah, I can help. Ask me anything. Well, I don't know if I can help, but ask me anything. <laughs> I will try to help. That's the that's all I can really say. Uh, let's see. Crean. The players. 
discover the legend of Aluaria and the Good Queen. Rumors of her spirit. Entombed. Uh, the legend of the kingdom. And the good queen Krelia. Rumors of her spirit being entombed. Encourage them to seek it out. Alright, let's see, where am I with the uh, the... So this would be the, so it's clearly more than three story acts, but the resolution takes place in a player choice, which is really important for games. You always want to give the player a choice if you can. So the player discovers the legend of the kingdom of Aluera, Aluaria, Alu, Aluari, ooh, geez, <laughs> maybe I need to change the name, and the good queen Krelia. Rumors of her spirit being entombed encourage them to seek it out. The players follow the legend to the site of her grave. There they must fight hordes of orcs in order to get to her remains. They retreat for remains and Kreen the Vile appears before them. She demands the player bury her in the new elven kingdom so that she may find peace. <clears throat> uh, actually, let's do combat here. And attacks them. If they defeat her, she demands the player bury her in the new elven kingdom so that she may find peace. The player may decide to bury the remains, and Kreen will give them legendary item for good characters. Or they may decide to bind Kreen the Vile to the main protagonist's will, and thus she becomes an unwilling evil slave for the party. Good enough. Functioning packaging. Okay, part two of the test. There are several gameplay mechanics which will require in-game story explanations based around our game's nature as a fantasy card collection game. CCG, great. In one of the mechanics, the player can place the heroes... What am I looking for? I'm not looking for anything. <laughs> I'm, this is, these are uh, tests for a game company called uh, Yota Games. So I'm taking a design or writing test for Yota, Yota Games. Apparently they're known for Mafia City. They're uh, a game studio in Shanghai. And... Uh, I don't know. Do you not know my background? So I'm a game developer, been working in the industry for 22 years, worked on Warcraft 3, Old World Strangers Wrath, Wasteland 3, a bunch of games. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just, I'm doing this stuff live so that people can see what this is like to work in game development and be taking these tests and stuff. <laughs> um not that this is normal. Every game studio has totally different tests. Um, so don't think that this is like, there's just this one type of, this is a writing test for this particular studio and every studio has their own style of test. In fact, I've never seen two studios that have the same test except for Ubisoft and Gameloft had the same uh, design tests for certain things, uh, primarily for uh, analytical design. Uh, what am I doing here? And one of the mechanics the player can place here is they've collected into one of five slots. The lowest ranked hero among these five will be set as the standard. Afterwards, the player may put any number of additional heroes into additional slots, and those heroes will be raised to the standard level. Raised to the standard level. The level of the weakest hero of the original five. The lowest ranked hero among these five will be set as the standard. Please write a potential name for this gameplay mechanic and an in-story justification, which includes possible appearance and descriptions of the mechanic as it appears in game. So this is a tooltip. I'm writing a tooltip here. Uh... This is a shitty mechanic that I would not design. <laughs> the reason that it's a shitty mechanic is because it errs on the side of the weakest when instead you should err on the side of the strongest I understand why they're doing this because they want the player to put their strongest heroes 
and that means that they have to get at least five people up to the max. The standard... Okay, wait. Am I misunderstanding their mechanic? In one of the mechanics, the player can place the heroes they've collected into one of five slots. The lowest ranked hero among those five will be set as the standard. Afterwards, the player may put any number of additional heroes into additional slots. And those heroes will be raised to the standard level, the level of the weakest hero of the original five. Ah, I've misunderstood. The player can place the heroes they've collected. Oh, I've run out of music. Here we go. Gallant. Hopefully this is good. This is the Stream Beats. Stream Beats is uh, copyright free music. I can't check your channel right now. I'm doing the test. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me think here. Standard bearers. Standard bearers. Standard bearers. Are the set the uh, standard for all other units in your army for all other characters? What heroes? Mm. The lowest level standard bearer uh, all here we go. The five standard bearers set the standard for all other heroes in your army. All heroes will be raised to the level of the lowest standard bearer. How many words is that? 29? No more than 100. I think that's that's functional. Does that make sense? The five standard bearers set the standard for all... set the standard... maybe I should use it to set the... set the ceiling? Set the floor. Floor? Thesaurus, save me! Not standard, but... No. Set the floor. Set the deck. Bottom? Set the... Base. Base. The five standard bearers set the base level for all other heroes in your army. All heroes will be raised to the level of the lowest level standard bearer. There. No confusion. The question is, do they know what a standard bearer is? A soldier is responsible for carrying the distinctive flag of a unit regiment. Yeah, yeah. I know what it is, but do they know what it is? I think most people would know what a standard bearer is. I think they could figure it out. Because the, the way that... that um, uh, potential names, which includes... Race level of the standard bearer. I need a story justification as well. All heroes will be raised to the level of the lowest level standard bearer. Set base level for all the heroes in your army. The five standard bearers set the example 
Set the example for all other heroes in your army. Not example. I need a better word. Like... Precedent. No. Ooh. Exemplar. I like that. The five standard bearers are the exemplars. Is this now it's getting too confusing. I think I'm overthinking. Ooh, paragon, I love that word. Yeah, it's a model. Five standard bearers are the paragons for all the heroes in your army. All heroes will be raised to the level of the lowest level standard bearer due to their influence and training. There, that's it. That's perfect. How many words? 34. That is a good tool tip. <clears throat> hey, good night, man. Thanks for stopping in. Um, It's the lowest level hero of the standard bearers, though. Does that be, does it make sense? Because that's the thing that I was struggling with too. Initially, I thought uh, I thought the same thing that you're thinking, but you're picking five heroes, so you can pick the five highest level heroes you have, and obviously you would. And then those, and then all other heroes would be raised to the level of the lowest level hero of the standard bearers. But does that do you get that from this? explanation or did i did i not do a good enough job that's the question i'm asking myself right now <laughs> the five standard bearers are the paragons for all other heroes in your army all heroes will be raised to the level of the lowest level standard bearer due to their influence and training Lowest level standard. Is there a better way to say this? You misread, but that means that it's easy to misread. And that's a problem. Are you sure? Maybe there's a way to do this better so there's no confusion. I, that's what I'm trying to do. All heroes will be raised to the level of the lowest level standard. Maybe, the, maybe I start with the lowest level standard bearer sets the level for all other heroes. Is it all heroes that's confusing? Uh, what if I said all other heroes? What if I... Let's reverse this then. Let's reverse this. The lowest level standard bearer will raise... The lo er, all other heroes to their level due to their influence and training. The lowest level standard bearer will raise all other heroes to their level due to their influence and training. Does this make is this better than what I had before? The five standard bearers are the paragons for all other heroes in your army. The lowest level standard bearer will raise all other heroes to their level due to their influence and training. If you read that in a game, you're, you're playing a mobile game and you read what a standard bearer is and you've got a slot, you've got five slots and you're picking the heroes to put into those slots. Do you understand that the lowest level one you put in there will set the level for everyone else? I know, like intuitively it's a bad mechanic. So I don't even like the mechanic itself, but I, I understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. So all that matters is that I explain it correctly. <clears throat> Should I have my chat on screen? The justification isn't the best. <clears throat> Influence and training. 
Is it good enough? Yeah, okay, it's good enough. You're right. Overthinking is the enemy of completion. <clears throat> <laughs> Gotta move on. Because uh, there's three more tests. <clears throat> Easter is coming! We're going to hold an Easter event in our game. Please design a fantasy context or justification for a fun Easter event background for the event story. Easter and fantasy elements required. Oh, okay. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Istara, Istara, the white dragon, has clumsily <laughs> lost her eggs throughout the kingdom. Can you find? <laughs> Istara! <laughs> Rages and destroys everything. Leaving flame and ash in her wake. Die. <laughs> it's a, it's a little over the top, but uh, I think I think that'll work. All right, I think we're good. Did you miss the Hamturo? <laughs> the Hamturo, I think, is my favorite. It's a it's a race of uh, hamster hamster humanoid hoarders, <laughs> but they're neutral in all conflicts because they always have the biggest winter stores, so everyone goes to them to get their food when it gets cold. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good one. All right, we're done with this. Oh, boy. Let's see how long it is. Ooh, six questions. Question one, write a brief story on the character shown in the picture below, clearly describing the character and his personality traits. The story needs to be compelling and appealing while ensuring that the character has enough attractive and intriguing main points. Yeah, this is all for Yota Games, uh, but these are all for different projects. So the way that Yota Games uh, approached me was that they said they had, um, uh, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six. They had six, six projects and each one of them needs a narrative designer uh, slash writer, and so they suggested um, that I that I could apply for all of them. And so I said, "Yeah, sure, send me all the tests," um, because I collect the tests. <laughs> I actually have a folder full of them somewhere. Uh, I don't know if I want to go digging for it right now. Yeah, this is a writing test for this studio. But the thing is that every game studio, in what sense is this a test? In that it's testing my ability to create something f for that they need. I mean, they could just steal all this stuff, I guess. Actually, they can't. Technically, I have a copyright uh, because I'm writing it, and I have proof because I'm writing it live on stream. So technically, I could sue them if I found that they took the Hamturo race and turned it into a thing. I don't... I don't think they would. Generally, people are pretty good about only using stuff that you are paid for. I don't think I've, I've only had my work stolen once. Um, and uh, they didn't make money off of it, so there was no reason to sue them. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry, what was I doing? Oh, okay, write a story about him and his personality. I mean, this looks like a Warcraft character to me, doesn't it? Is this a Warcraft character? It looks like it's straight out of Warcraft, like... Right? Hmm. 
<laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's not good. What are they doing? That is absolutely the Lordaeron lion. That is 100% the Lordaeron lion. Okay, like, okay, maybe this isn't in their game. Maybe this is just part of their test. Is to take something from Warcraft and just... Alright, whatever. I mean, a test is a test. If I go there, I'm going to have to warn them that they are <laughs> clearly... If this is in one of their games, they are clearly infringing some copyrights and, and stuff. So I hope it's not, but... <clears throat> whatever. This is a king, or at least a prince. Uh... You'd say Prince? Yeah, I could go with Prince. Armand. Kane? Kanye? <laughs> <laughs> no, not Prince Kanye. What are you doing? No. <laughs> uh, Prince, Prince. I'm going to go with Armon. I know, I know a guy named Armon. It's a cool name. Prince Armon. <laughs> it's, it, it is funny that they took a basically what looks to me like a Warcraft uh, image. But maybe it, maybe that's part of their test, is that they want to write in the style... They want someone who writes in the style of Warcraft. Well, I got news for them. I fucking wrote for Warcraft, so guess what? <laughs> Armand's a cool name. It's an Iranian name. I know a guy named Armand. He'd be, uh, he'd be interested <laughs> to know that I'm using his name for a test. It's just for a test, though. It's not actually a character going into anything. Prince Armand of... It's going to be some L-O-T-H name. What's a good city name? Because I want to just say Lordaeron because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> Prince Armon of... Arajan? Ar Arayan? How do the how do they uh in Iran how do they pronounce the J? Is it a Z H sound? Uh, a hard J. Arajan. 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 That's a cool name. Wolf Lorian. <clears throat> All right, let's just reread this because now I've thrown myself off. Yeah, EA will fuck you. Uh, never trust EA with anything. Uh... <clears throat> the second child of... Second child of King Toril. Prince Armand. Military strategy. Strategems. Strategems? Is that not a word? Stratagems? How is that not a word? Stratagems. Did I misspell it? Is it E? Stratagems. 
stratagem. Can you not pluralize it? Yes, you can. What? There, <laughs> I was misspelling it, that's why. <clears throat> Prince Armand's military stratagems <clears throat> and ability to defend the kingdom long been renowned. It's just your chat settings? What's my chat settings? What have I done? <laughs> no, I, I, I was just misspelling. Uh, second child of King Toral, Prince Armand's military stratagems and ability to defend the kingdom have long been renowned. <clears throat> Knowing he would likely never be king. Took to the wing from an early age, learning the sword and shield. You could lift them. Ten. often said that if Prince Armand is seen near your city, you know that the war will never reach your home. So despite his gruff demeanor and disinterest, Activities. He's celebrated throughout the kingdom whenever he appears. How many words? 96. Got plenty more if I want. Is that enough? Prince Armand of Lothlorien, the second child of King Toril, Prince Armand's military stratagems and ability to defend the kingdom have long been renowned. Knowing he would likely never be king, leaving that to his charismatic older brother. His charismatic and far more diplomatic older brother. He took to the wing of the military from an early age. Period. He learned the sword and shield from the time he could lift them at ten. He's now a master and was a master at arms. for his 18th birthday. It is often said that if Prince Armand is seen near your city, you know that the war will never reach your home. Thus, that, despite his gruff demeanor and disinterest in mirthful activities, he is celebrated throughout the kingdom whenever he appears. Maybe the ways of the sword and the shield? Yeah, maybe that. That would actually be better. He learned the ways of the sword and shield from the time he could lift them at ten and was a master at arms before his 18th birthday. Prince Armand of Senior City, you know that the war will never reach your home. Thus, despite his gruff demeanor and disinterest in mirthful activities, he is celebrated throughout the kingdom wherever he, whenever he appears. Whenever, wherever, whenever, whenever, yeah. Good. Yeah, I think that's enough. I mean, I have 300 words, but if you can do it in half, why why bother? 
All right, question two. Suppose that the character from the previous question is the first character you encounter after entering the game. Write a dialogue that would occur between the two of you leading on to the next story. This needs to reflect the character's personality traits. Max 300 words. Okay. Um, we'll grab my screenplay template. And here we go. <clears throat> A dour and hardened man appears before you. His gleaming armor shines. Mm. Day sunlight nearly blinding you. Towers for you. You don't like Dower? Dower? It's uh here. Gloomy, sullen, severe, stern. Towers above you. His gleaming armor shines in the new, new sunlight, nearly blinding you. You almost don't see it before you speak. But the crown of the prince adorns his head, though worn and dusty. Though worn, cracked. The, the leather is worn and the gem cracked from what must have been a thousand battles. <laughs> like, English is... Okay, so the thing about English, I think English is one of the worst and best languages in the world. It's one of the worst because there are so many fucking rules of grammar and spelling that are totally inconsistent. And the reason that that is the case is because, and this is why it's the best language, uh, they take from every other language. So like it has its roots in Latin, but there's also Germanic influence and... Uh, French influence and just whenever a cool word comes up that do that English doesn't have a word for, they just take it. So you've got shit like, you know, hors d'oeuvres, which is just like the little snacks you eat before a dinner. And that's from French. And you've got, you know, rendezvous, which is like a slightly sexual meeting. Or no, it does, doesn't have to be. Rendezvous. 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 An agreement between two or more persons to meet at a certain time and place. So usually associated with the sexual meeting, but not always. Anyways, but that's that's from French, but it's used in English. And there's like Schaudenfraude. Frauda. Schaudenfraude. Schauden. Schaden. Schaudenfraude. Is that's a German word, which is satisfaction from someone else's misfortune. <laughs> That's why English is great and stupid. <clears throat> All right. Back to... You learned a lot when Trump COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of people had schadenfreude when Trump got COVID. <laughs> uh, All right. All right, all right. Uh, Prince Armand. You have the look of a yearling. But 
Put in the arm long. No. No, sir. Uh but Prince. Just call me. Uh, Prince. Uh. Um. That's the spirit. Wait, what the fuck is the point of this combo? Suppose the character is the first game you have. Oh, this is the first character you entered. Okay. Leading you into the next story. That's the spirit. Looking to win fame and fortune on the battlefield? We'll grab from here and copy paste. Yes. Come to the right place. Mm. I have just the task. Is this a good introduction? That's the spirit. How does this play out? You have the look of a yearling about you. Been in the army long? No, sir. Uh, Prince? Just call me Armand. That's my name. Yes, sir. Uh, Prince uh, Armand. That's the spirit. What brings you to these parts? Looking to win fame and fortune on the battlefield. An underwhelming response? Yeah, I guess it is. Does an exclamation help? <laughs> Where do I begin? You've come to the right place. I have just the task for an aspiring soldier. Like yourself. <clears throat> I hope you like killing orcs. <laughs> <clears throat> You're the player. What, what response would you like to see? Yes, sir. Who be killing orcs, motherfucker? Because this is a Warcraft clone. <laughs> I'm going to go with good enough uh, and move to question three. Uh, using Dungeons and Dragons as reference, construct an engaging worldview of the game by briefly describing its set environment, world story development, in 300 words? Wow, guys. Wow. Uh, okay. Is this the same world, though? I guess it is. 300 words. Describe a world. Sure. Why not? I've done it before. Oh, uh, let's see here. Gotta think fantasy, though. I have really good fantasy soundtracks for this, but I, I'm worried about getting copyright stri 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 struck. Stricken. Stricken. Stricked. Stricken. Stricken. Fuck. Whatever that's called. You say that, but I'm telling you, EA will fuck me. <laughs> and EA keeps buying other companies. So before long, every fucking company will be under EA's umbrella, and then every OST will be uh, will be a copyright strike. That's what I'm worried about, is that the, they're going to buy certain companies, and then, and then the, an entire backlog of videos will be fucked. <clears throat> 
if a game was ever streamed, it's fine for the most part. Uh, you know, yeah, Nintendo can be a bitch about it, but I've also gotten copyright strikes on my Wasteland 3 videos because there's music in there from uh, from something, from somewhere that they copyright strike me. I'm not even sure it was the same music, but I got copyright strike and I had to fight them. Uh, saying, fair use, I was playing the game. I'm not, I'm not playing any other music, I'm just playing the game. The only reason that Stream Beats is safe is because Harris Heller has a vendetta against the fucking music industry. Um, Harris Heller is the guy who uh, made this music. Um, <laughs> I mean, it literally says on it. Look at this. Copyright free ambient music for your Twitch streams, YouTube videos, and stream sniping XQC. <laughs> Yeah, I got a. Uh, I was just trying to play it from his site, but it kept pausing or stopping. So I, what I did was I got a three month free trial for Apple Music, and now I'm playing through that. So I assume he gets money every time I play this stuff. Um, but and and I know I won't get copyright stricken. So, yay, Stream Beats! Thank you, Harris Heller. You're you're amazing. I'm sure he's fine monetarily, um, and he still keeps his uh, low-key lifestyle, which I personally appreciate. Like, there's no reason to go all excess. Things are good inside the order. No, 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 no. You got to start with uh, the evil festering inside. Uh, something like, uh... the armies. Of the drow move, move beneath the surface, always seeking the weakest point in the kingdoms of the surface dwellers. Mm, long have they sought to find a way to destroy the balance between good and evil. And now they have found a key. <clears throat> the demon egg. It's hatching. And soon it's fury. Soon the fury of the burning realms. Be unleashed on the kingdoms. What did I call it? <laughs> Lothlorien. Forever changing the balance. Is that enough? That's like not even. Yeah, 69 words. 69! Perfect. Moving on. Question 4. Christmas is around the corner. Christmas themed events will be held in game. Write a suitable story background for this themed event. The story needs it to have a certain magical element and a clear purpose. <laughs> yeah, Drow is a, it's a race in D&D. It's the, uh, the Dark Elves in Dungeons and & Dragons. And the reason I used it is because they said use Dungeons & Dragons as a reference. So I did. Christmas is around the corner and Christmas themed events. Okay. <clears throat> so my go-to here is usually to have an evil Santa Claus. Uh, because whenever I hear Santa Claus, I think Satan's claws. <laughs> Satan's claws. Which is just, I don't know. My mind is sick, I guess. Christmas events. Santa Claus. I'm just going to go with Satan's Claws. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Merry Slashmas. It is the time. 
season for dragon hunting. Yes, it's Oh, demon hunting. Yes, we're all going hunting for Satan's claws. <clears throat> These rare demon artifacts are strewn throughout the Burning Realms. And each one has a gift to bestow on the Lucky Finder. The power of demons! For Satan's laws. These rare demon artifacts are strewn throughout the burning realms. Each one has a gift to bestow upon the lucky finder. Power of demons. You and your friends can join forces to defeat. Ooh. Forces, forces. Can't repeat yourself. Together to defeat the demonic forces. And take their claws for yourselves. Give gifts in the form of demon skins and share your trove of treasures. Merry slashness to all. <clears throat> That's fine. Did I go over? <laughs> Good luck with Arthas, I mean, Armand. You bastard! Don't make me change the name. Uh, 80 words? Yeah, I don't need 300. Uh, question 5. Give a suitable name for each items. Items? Each item. Healing item. Resurrection item. Power attack enhancing item based on Western Fantasy. Briefly describe the items as you would imagine them. Uh, of healing. Resurrection. <clears throat> Amulet of Reincarnation. Power attack enhancing item. Uh oh. Gauntlets. Giant strength. I mean, this is all standard D&D shit. Maybe I need to amp it up. <clears throat> These could also get you sued by, uh... Actually, maybe not. Actually, maybe they could. No, I guess not. Wait. Uh... Can this get you sued by uh, TSR? I mean, that's not TSR anymore. What is it? Uh, Wizards of the Coast? I don't know. Potentially. <laughs> Potion of Healing. I don't know. A standard alchemist brew.
We mourn. A hero who dies. We will be brought back. Life. Though perhaps not in their original form. And this is destroyed. And it is used. Magical energies. Turn to dust. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Large gauntlets that magically shrink to fit the user, but imbue the strength. And imbues them with the strength of giants. Da -da -da -da. Easy, easy, easy. Question six. I didn't go do anything special with that, but I don't think I need to. Uh, question six. Please select one word from group A and group B below and combine them. For example, Wood Elf Healer. Uh, by using the combination, create a hero and briefly describe its features, personality, and one of its skills and performances. Okay. <laughs> Undead healer. <laughs> I bet everyone does that, though. No! Uh, is this a specific character or is this a general? Create a hero and personality. Ah. Undead healer. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. Timmy? No, let's not, let's not do that. I want an A sounding name. A or U. I need inspiration. Ulysses. Ulrich! That's my undead healer. Ulrich the Unfortunate. <laughs> Ulrich the Unfortunate was a pious... Uh, I can never spell this. Pious man who followed the Lord of Light to his dying days. A priest and healer in his home city. He was known for his kindness and generosity with his healing abilities throughout the land. Thus it was inf most unfortunate when the uh, King Death. I need another word for death. That's too on the nose. Uh, thesaurus. Thesaurus. I need you. Death. Decimus. King Decimus the Undead. Laid waste to Ulrich's town and converted him <laughs> into a lich. 
<laughs> Ulrich's very existence is an abhorrence himself. But King Decimus keeps his soul within a jar inside the deep inside deep inside the kingdom of the undead forcing Ulrich to live eternally <laughs> despite his wish to die as such Ulrich casts healing magic to help those in need even still However, it is a great harm, harm to himself, and he will periodically die from his healing efforts, or he will periodically disintegrate and reform. <clears throat> Chamber due to these efforts. There he is mercilessly mocked. <laughs> Until he escapes and returns to healing those in the around. I misspelled it. It's with an A. Skip ahead. <clears throat> Let's see how this works. Ulrich the Unfortunate was a pious man who followed the Lord of Light to his dying days. A priest and healer in his home city, he was known for his kindness and generosity with his healing abilities. He was known for his kindness and generosity with his abilities throughout the land. Thus, it was most unfortunate when King Decimus of the Necromancers laid waste to Ulrich's town and converted him into a lich. Ulrich's very existence is an abhorrence to himself, but King Decimus keeps his soul within a jar deep inside the kingdom of the undead, forcing Ulrich to live eternally despite his wish to die. And return to the Lord of Light. As such, Ulrich casts healing magic to help those in need, even though it causes great harm to himself. He will periodically disintegrate as a result of his efforts and reform in King Decimus's chambers to due to the binding magic of his phylactery. That's what happens with glitches, right? Lich phylactery. <laughs> okay. They reconstitute at their phylactery. Yeah, that's what I thought. There he is mercilessly mocked for his goodness until he escapes and returns to healing those in need around the kingdom of Baldur. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's pretty good. I'm sick of that one. <clears throat> this needs a subheading then. I'm gonna go with heading two. Poor Ulrich the Unfortunate. Oh, dang, I don't need that. Alright, we're good. Uh, that. Let's 
So we did that one. So we did G and M. I'll send those off in a second. I do a lot of business on Skype, by the way. I know a lot of people don't use Skype anymore, but when you're dealing with uh, China, unless you have WeChat or is it WeChat or WhatsApp? It's WeChat. Unless you have WeChat, which generally you need to be in Asia to use, uh, it's tough to do business with people in China. So, but they do use Skype because Microsoft is everywhere. All right. So that's two more tests. We got two more. I'm going to save them for tomorrow. One's a sci-fi game. One's a mafia game. So that'll be a different. That'll be quite a change of pace. These four or the first one or two were like mundane kind of stuff, and then these two were high fantasy. High fantasy is easiest for me, and then sci-fi is close. The next closest in ease. Yar!